Welcome to this episode of Erika. We are going to have a wonderful, very insightful conversation with Dr. K. Vijay Raghavan. He is the principal scientific advisor to the government of India, and his office has taken lots of interesting initiative to fight this pandemic against COVID-19 virus. We are going to continue this conversation, and sir, thank you for being in the show. I mean, it's a very wonderful opportunity, and. Uh, we have lots of questions, so let me start with one of the questions which many of us have in our mind. Uh, your office was one of the earliest, uh, let's say, science and technology uh, uh, related institution that came up and said that in addition to fighting in the front of uh, medical field, doctors and medical personnel, and also, uh, let's say, administration in terms of maintaining uh, order, we need to also bring all our science and technology together to fight this pandemic. Uh, you had also started an initiative mobilizing scientific community to fight against uh, COVID-19. So where is that mobilization? What's happening there? Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, this is a, a very valuable um, opportunity to interact with RSTV. Uh, very happy to be here. Now, um, we must uh, keep in mind that over the last few years, there have been multiple discussions within our scientific community about how we can work together uh, and do things together. Uh, for example, particularly this was uh, focused what we, on what we call city clusters, where mm -hmm. clusters of science institutions in each city come together. Mm -hmm. So in many ways, the groundwork for interactions, mm -hmm. the discussions had already gone, uh, mm -hmm. gone along quite a bit. But I must say that throughout those discussions, we were uh, we had solutions in search of a problem, as it were, okay. and we couldn't home in on a problem. Uh -huh. uh, very sadly and rather dramatically, COVID nineteen fell on us, mm -hmm. and that was the problem for which all these solutions could come together. Mm -hmm. And without you know too much top down push mm -hmm. and a huge surge of bottom up interactions. It is very impressive to see how our scientific community, from the most basic mathematicians to the most applied aerospace engineers, have come okay. together to address complex problems and solve them. Secondly, they've worked with startups in an incredible okay. manner, and they've worked with industry also in a very, very uh, exciting manner. Similarly, industry has worked with startups and with academia. So there's a lot of togetherness which we see. Sir, you said uh, two areas which uh, nobody would think of associating with uh, novel coronavirus or COVID. You said mathematicians and aerospace engineers. Where do they come in? I mean, uh, uh, it, it seems like uh, chalk and cheese. Yeah. Well, you know, mathematicians are very important. Let me give you just one example. If you want to pool mm. tests and do it together, mm -hmm. the simple and obvious way is to say, let me pull five samples or test 10 samples and test them together. And if everything is negative, then everything is negative. If the pool is negative, then everything is negative. But if the pool is positive, then I have to go back and test each sample. Right? Uh, yeah. okay. Now, that is, you know, doesn't require great mathematics. But you can use very complex algorithms mm. which are elegant and say, Supposing I have a low frequency of positivity in a population, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Then supposing I take 100 samples mm -hmm. and I have overlapping pools which I make. Okay. Then what is the minimal number of tests I have to do should a pool turn out to be positive, right? Okay. And then if the pool of 100 turns out to be positive, the answer is not 100. It can be much less. So uh -huh. that requires combinatorial pooling. Uh -huh. So that requires a very important uh, computer science and mathematics, which then you test out in the laboratory, which then you test out with real samples and which you roll out. And the team which developed this between Bangalore and IIT Bombay, um, you know, the institutions there have you know, done a great job. So that's okay. one example. Fine, fine. That's, a, that's very interesting. Many of us may not even know that uh... For example, in a testing, we would only think of it as, you know, a routine laboratory work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mathematician's hand, in I mean, unseen hand is behind there. It's something that we would never know. That's uh, interesting. Uh, and there was also... As you asked, uh, uh, 
if you look at the DRDO, uh -huh. they have worked to repurpose many of their, you know, uh, areas of work to make ventilators, to okay. work on PPE, to, mm -hmm. you know, repurpose their material science and design places uh, yeah. to make super glue to, you know, for personal uh, protective equipment. So it's really been uh, excellent over there too. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I mean, so uh, there are also multiple issues of this kind where uh, we need uh, different areas of science and technology to uh, pull in if you want to actually have a better uh, solution, right? Yeah. Uh, one question that comes and most often people ask is that India is not Europe or India is not, uh, uh, let's say, the USA. The population, we are living uh, in a denser way. I mean, the density of population here is high. Even if you take a family, uh, the family unit here is uh, six to seven people on the average, maybe except in uh, modern cities with uh, young couples, but generally people live with their uh, parents, uh, grandparents. So three generations live in a house. So solutions which work for, uh, let's say, Europe, perhaps are not suitable for India, right? I mean, many of the, uh, 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 let's say, social distancing norm or physical distancing norm that we are talking about, uh, resources, for example, even face masks. I mean, there is a dearth of it. So how India should find its own solution? What do you think of it? You know, um, there is no question that context matters. And, you know, one can be general about the nature of solutions. You mm -hmm. can say social distancing or physical distancing, wear masks, hygiene, um, you know, test, track and trace. These are all generic um, solutions, which are not unimportant because they took a long time to evolve. Um, but the question is, how does one uh, implement it in different contexts? Mm -hmm. There, there are multiple levels of responsibility before we decide what to do. Of course, the government of India has a responsibility in certain ways, the state government, the city, the municipality. But most important of all is both communication and absorption of the communication into action by all of us. Okay. No, this attitude that somehow, you know, someone else will address the problem mm -hmm. at each of these levels should not be there. It is an intermixing at multiple levels. Mm -hmm. And the responsibility of us as citizens is very, very important. Now, I'm not wearing a mask now and you're not wearing a mask now because you're alone. And I'm yeah. also alone in a separate location. Yeah. But otherwise, we should wear a mask. When we wear a mask, we shouldn't pull it down below our nose or our mouth to talk. In fact, when we talk, that's exactly when we need to have a mask is more important, yes. Yes. when we interact with others. So these things in practice are important. Wearing a mask, keeping physical distance between people and hygiene. If we do that, no matter how difficult it is, if we work out what needs to be done in our environment, it's very well to say amongst people who are rich, who have the space and the uh, wherewithal to do all this, what about those who are in very crowded conditions? Yeah. And there yeah. we need to work out innovative solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a shared toilet where 5,000 people share a toilet, where mm -hmm. common wash areas are there, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. So um, several people have addressed these issues and okay. our office has also brought out uh, manuals which help these kinds of issues uh -huh. and uh, ultimately whether it is a building uh, which is uh, and ventilation needs to be addressed or a you know crowded uh, area such as in Dharavi these things have to be addressed with local solutions for these very general issues and they can be done they're not easy by any means yeah yeah that's a uh, uh... One of the issues that you also talked about is that what about a homemade mask? I mean, that's also one thing that uh, uh, in the initial period when there was a lot of uh, people talking about death of mask, we talked about why don't we make it at home? Uh, how does it work? See, first of all, we must have clarity. What is the purpose of any kind of intervention? Face cover, a homemade face cover is much better than nothing, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, imagine that you are got your mouth full of water. Mm. Imagine mm. that. And imagine that everyone else has got their mouth full of water. Yeah. And they're going yeah. around spraying the water, right? Mm. Hypothetically, imagine that. Mm. What would a face cover do? 
it will prevent the spray from your mouth from reaching another person. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If the other person doesn't have a cover, it will prevent it, reduce hugely the amount which gets to you. Mm -hmm. Is it the best thing in the world? No. The best thing in the world is not to have water in your mouth, not to have, to have a strong physical barrier, to put a, a really high kind of mask. All of that is there. But the face mask is much better and doable than doing nothing. Yeah, and yeah. it can enormously curtail the extent of the spread. Now, if in addition to just droplets, mm. if the spread were also due to airflow, mm -hmm. there too the face mask would be very, very valuable. Mm -hmm. But you must keep in mind, and no one ever says that that is the case, that face masks, just wearing a face mask doesn't solve the entire problem. It's one yeah. component. So you need to look at the airflow, the building, the room, the slum, or wherever you are, and look at other parameters also. Yeah. So uh, in any case, uh, one thing is clear that uh, we need to find solutions at uh, local places for local condition, rather than just only talking about uh, generic solution. Because many times the generic solutions are not going to be actually implementable in uh, ground condition uh, here and now. I mean, it's it's one thing to talk about that in future things should change, but that's a different issue. But here and now, that's not going to happen. That's where you are saying that we need to look at innovative uh, solutions to problems that we have in Iran, right? Absolutely. But you know, one thing which is very interesting and important, which is coming out mm -hmm. through the analysis of the spread of the disease. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two possible ways you can say that the disease can spread. Uh -huh. One is that every infected person is an equal spreader, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Whether A, B, C, D, all of them spread equally. Yeah. Yeah. The other is that some people, for some reasons, are more effective at spreading than others. Okay. And okay. the third is some environments are more effective as causing spread than others. Yeah, Each yeah. of these things matter. Mm -hmm. So we know now that prolonged conversation mm -hmm. and proximity of groups in prolonged conversation, where one person is either a pre-symptomatic positive person or an asymptomatic perhaps, or symptomatic, can cause a lot of problem. We know that, you know, that prolonged conversation combined with a specific kind of airflow can... Mm -hmm infect certain people in the path of that droplet flow and leave mm -hmm. others completely untouched, yeah. right? We know that short interactions with infected people are less likely to cause transmission than mm -hmm. long interactions, even with poorly infected people, right? So, and we don't know who is highly infected, who is not, right? And, and therefore, you're going to a shop and buying something and taking great care might protect you. But if the shopkeeper doesn't take care and interacts with thousands of people, then that person is more likely to be oh, susceptible. Yeah. So these yeah. kinds of sensible, obvious kinds of things are becoming more borne out by evidence. And therefore, one should be constantly aware of what one is doing. There is no point in taking great care when you are in a situation where infection is likely to be low and then throwing care to the winds in some other context. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It was a very nice uh, thing. We'll take a very short break here. Keep watching, Rika. After the break, we'll continue this conversation. Bheed bhaad wale ilako mein na jayen. धार्मिक सांस्कृतिक मनोरंजन शैक्षणिक आयोजन से लेकर खेलकूद की गतिविधियों से दूर रहें। संभव हो तो वर्क एट होम करें काम के दौरान सहकर्मियों से एक मीटर की दूरी बनाएं और गैर जरूरी यात्राओं से बचें। Welcome back to Eureka. We are having a very wonderful, very insightful conversation with uh, Professor K. Vijay Raghavan. He is the principal scientific advisor to the government of India. Uh, sir, before the break, we were talking about some of the initiatives taken by uh, PSA. And one that uh, caught my eye was uh, innovation challenge. Uh, I'm sure this uh, pandemic is uh, going to be a long haul. I mean, it's not going to end in a week or so. So, we need to find ways, innovative ways, 
So your office had uh, issued this uh, innovation challenge. Can you tell us about it? What what's your purpose? What have we got? Well, you know, uh, before that, you must keep in mind that the principal scientific advisor's office is uh, only an office which brings about synergy, and the executive arms are all our science ministries, other ministries, agencies, our institutions, and so on. So. Anything which works well, all credit goes to them. And anything which does it, you, we are very happy to take the blame, right? So keep that in mind. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, now that said, um, innovation in this situation is very, very important, of course. And as I said in the example of aerospace engineers reformatting themselves, mm -hmm. our startup ecosystem has also reformatted themselves enormously. They have, they have also, you know. Uh, started making things despite supply chain challenges, uh, and that needs to get integrated into the standard system so that what they do can get marketed and so on. And mm -hmm. the government's empowered, empowered committees have worked to match standards with availability and requirements and, and done that. So there's been an enormous amount of uh, you know positive uh, aspects over there. In okay. addition, there have been, um, you know, for example, there was a high-level meeting recently where another new kind, uh, a question came up about drug discovery okay. and whether one can use computational tools for drug discovery in a much more broader context. Uh -huh. And so the CSIR and the AICTE together mm -hmm. are going to come out with a drug discovery hackathon, which is a very high-end kind of hackathon where okay. all the training in drug discovery will be, and the molecular tools, the modeling tools required for drug discovery will be made accessible to uh, students, both at the undergraduate and graduate level, so that they can work on designing drugs in a way by which they can see which are the molecules which fit uh, and likely to be effective against the virus. And then the CSIR will take that on through testing and to startups and to industry. So this is, this is a great opportunity for that kind of a push. That's a, that's a very, very interesting idea, sir. I think uh, today we need to fly hundreds of kites. Only then we will be able to see at least few Absolutely. of them actually yielding uh, results the way we want. Uh, I'll uh, slightly change track and then ask you another question, which is uh, like uh, now uh, that uh, lockdowns are uh, slightly getting relaxed. Uh, people are talking about uh, living with virus. So what's your take on it? both as uh, advisor to the government of India and also as a biologist yourself, uh, how do we live with the virus? Well, you know, there are only two things one can deal with, and many people all over the world have pointed this out. Mm -hmm. uh, one has to either change the virus mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and or change ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how does one do one or the other, or one and the other? Now, Changing the virus is going to take time in terms of drugs and vi uh, vaccines and getting them in. And that's another topic. We'll come to that soon. Mm -hmm. About changing ourselves, there are just five things we need to do. Okay. okay. Even if we know that drugs or vaccines can take a long time. Uh -huh. and these are very simple to state, but as you pointed out rightly in each context, they're not easy to do, right? Mm -hmm. So let me state them simply first, and then we can see how difficult it is to do that. One is you need to wear masks whenever you are in contact with others. Okay. okay. Second, you need to have physical distancing, particularly with the vulnerable, elderly, those who are ill in multiple ways. That's okay. very, very important. Young people can get infected without showing symptoms, and they will then, you know, likely infect elderly people in their families. This is a big challenge, but that yeah. needs to be done. So. Um, masks, physical distancing, hygiene, mm -hmm. washing your hands, not touching your face with, without washing your hands, uh, you know, uh, washing your hands and feet. Fecal oral transmission may be a possibility. Okay. So hygiene becomes even more important. Uh -huh. right? uh -huh. Fourthly, uh, tracking. That is, if someone turns out to be positive, then you have to go back in time and, 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 and identify them. And then after you test them, the last thing is isolation. 
these people need to be isolated. If one can do this with high speed, the last one, and follow all the others, then we can have a semblance of a normal life while we wait to do something on the virus with the drugs and, virus, uh, and vaccines. If we don't do these things, if we slip up on any one of them, then we will have a problem. And that's why I'm saying again and again, it's not only the citizen's job, it's not only the government's job, it's not only the city's job or your mohalla's job, Everyone must do all these five things together. Uh, and this is a concerted community effort which must be there. Yeah, nice. Thank you, sir. It's a, it's a very, very, I think, uh, uh, important advice uh, of how to live in this uh, post-corona world, particularly after the lockdown is much more relaxed and then when people are uh, going to go out, what we need to follow essential. That's uh, 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 listing it out as a five thing helps. Uh, you are uh, also a biologist. I mean, you have been heading uh, a major research institution in this country and also was the head of the biotechnology department in this country. I'm sure in the last four months, all over the world, people know about this virus much more than what we knew in the beginning. So in your view, what are all the main lessons or main important findings that we have got in the last four months? Oh, we've learned a lot in the last four months. And what we've learned in the last four months really is on the foundations of what was built up over a long, long time on mm. diseases and pandemics. But more relevant since 2003, since the first SARS-1 uh, epidemic. Mm -hmm. At that time, scientists from all over the world went to China mm -hmm. and they discovered the specific kinds of coronaviruses which were there in bats. Okay, and okay. they made some important foundational discoveries. Uh -huh. And those kinds of discoveries led to further studies later on. Those mm -hmm. discoveries basically showed that bats were major incubators of these viruses. Mm -hmm. And there are many kinds of coronaviruses. Okay. They don't cause any significant disease in bats. Mm -hmm. you no. Know, but that's because bats have, you know, calibrated their immunity to be able to deal with it. Okay. While still allowing the viruses to thrive over there. Uh -huh. So this results in a diversification of viruses which get uh -huh. selected potentially to do things other than merely infect bats. Uh -huh. So the lock and key which allows them to infect bats is fine-tuned by this incubation process, mm -hmm. so that he can also fit into a similar molecule in humans okay. and fit really well. That uh -huh. allows animal to human transmission. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then, because the fit is very nice with the human molecule, mm -hmm. it then allows human to human transmission. It uh -huh. is not just one un low probability event of the key by some chance opening this lock. It's okay. a perfect fit or a very good fit and allows the lock to open human to human, right? Okay. Now, this is a major leap which the virus has made. Okay. This is something which we've understood very rapidly, and this allowed us in this coronavirus 2 pandemic to understand okay. how this took place. And because we knew about coronaviruses, when we got the first sequence out, people could very rapidly develop tests for the presence of the virus. Okay. They also okay. could start studying the virus a lot. That was very valuable. And they've learned a lot more after that, even though there are many surprises which have come. This is not a standard coronavirus, unlike SARS-1, which has only upper respiratory tract infections. This is also a lower respiratory tract infections, infection. Now we are learning that it can infect multiple other tissues, such mm. as the and the gut, uh, that the virus is shed even in feces. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that it does affect children, albeit at a very low frequency, in very mm -hmm. unusual ways. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are surprises every day. Okay. Okay. So in this uh, basic science research about this novel coronavirus, what is uh, the Indian institution's contribution? Are we there in the game? Or is it uh, being researched only in uh, foreign countries? Well, there are extraordinarily talented Indian ecologists mm -hmm. who have studied bats. 
there are Indian scientists who have studied viruses and bats, and those are very valuable understanding, which we know. Uh, mm -hmm. There are Indian epidemiologists who study viral epidemics. There are mathematical modelers in India who model these things. Uh, there are disease biologists who know respiratory disease. So India is able to deal with this uh, substantially better than it would have if these people were not there. Okay. okay. So in the sense that uh, this institution that have been in existence for many years have come in handy when this pandemic uh, hit us, right? Uh, as a surprise. Well, I would say two things. Of course, they're not only handy, they're invaluable, just as our core health system itself. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, ASHA workers, Anganwadi workers, integrated disease surveillance program, the NCDC, the state health system, the ICMR, the health ministry. All of this has been built up so that, you know, our reach to the, you know, bottommost aspects of the pyramid is good. Uh, we have to, we have a similar whole range of problems. It's complex. It's not easy. But I think the system and the plumbing is there. And, you know, many things have been very nicely activated in the plumbing. Yeah, that's a very uh, uh, interesting point that how the systems, uh, which in everyday life, many of us, particularly from the middle class, would never see. But uh, it, it's, it's uh, hidden from our view. But suddenly we see them as the pillars of... Uh, saviors in this uh, time of uh, dark days, right? I mean, that's a, that's a very interesting point. I mean, how things which have been built up is silently has been playing its role. And today we see its uh, importance. You know, these are all very important insurance policies and safety belts. Mm -hmm. Don't need an insurance policy if there's no problem. You don't need a safety belt if there's no problem. Mm -hmm. But to not invest in a safety belt and not take an insurance policy would be very foolish. Mm -hmm. India has been very wise in taking out insurance policy in the health system and investing in fundamental research, which is a safety belt. Uh, very and, nicely put, sir, actually. Oh. And this has helped us a lot. Yeah, sir. Last question, because we don't have much time uh... Now that the uh, relaxation, I mean, now that the relaxation is happening, and you talked about what are the five things that we need to do, how will this pandemic end? Are we uh, seeing vaccines uh, in the arrays on? You know, this pandemic will end like other pandemics have. Mm -hmm. uh, either there will be solutions which will quell it and crush it, or there will be solutions which mitigate it and allow us to live with it. Mm -hmm. Vaccines look more and more reasonably possible, but remember, it's not just developing a vaccine, which is an extremely difficult task. A vaccine normally takes 10 to 15 years and 200 to 300 million dollars. Today, the world, including India, is trying to make it in one year. The only way you can do it in one year is by massive parallel processing. That requires money. So 200 or 300 dollars becomes 3 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, if you even so manage to make a vaccine, you have to stockpile hugely. You have to stockpile not just as in the Ebola epidemic for one location or for the MERS, like for one location, but for all over the world. That's an enormous stockpile. This vaccine is not just for kids. It's for adults also. How do you prioritize who's going to get it? India is one of the largest vaccine manufacturers in the world, and therefore we will be involved in manufacturing. But for now, we're also making every effort to work at the early stage in terms of design and development. Our Department of Biotechnology, the Indian Council for Medical Research, uh, multiple other agencies are doing a wonderful job working with our industry over here. So these things all allow us to be optimistic about a vaccine. But as I said, getting a vaccine is one thing, then distributing is another. So we have to learn to live with this in a very important of those five ways I told you, uh, if you have to be, um, you know, in a good position to uh, while we wait for a vaccine. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It has been a very wonderful conversation. Thank you for being in the show. Thank you for watching this show, which is a COVID special where we are exploring how Indian science is working behind the scene to help us fight this pandemic. We will come back with another episode. Next week, same time. Keep watching Eureka.